And I'm sorry that you're not able to be in class with us to work on this project, but I thought I would do a recording for this presentation for you so you have some better idea than me just giving you a Google Slides doc and you trying to figure out what the heck I'm trying to tell you in here. So let's just get jump. Let's just bleh, bleh, bleh. sorry. Let's just jump straight into this. So we are going to be doing a cardboard replica sculpture, meaning you are going to be taking an everyday object from your house, and you're going to be recreating that as close to exact as you can out of cardboard. Now I've provided you with two sheets of cardboard, which should be more than enough. If you do need more, this cardboard, you can find very similar cardboard from Dollar Tree or let me know and I can get you another sheet. So first off, there is this video and I've got this linked down below in this Google Classroom assignment. This is from the YouTube channel Tested.com or Adam Savage is Tested. Uh, Adam Savage, who is one of the hosts of Mythbusters, this is his YouTube channel. Um, and this is the this is part of a series of videos called the Inventurn, where they are holding a competition to find someone to be Adam Savage's next assistant slash next person working on the tested team. And in the video, they have the ten finalists who all had to do this same exact thing that you're going to be doing. They had to recreate an everyday object out of cardboard and some very uh, various other materials that they were given um, <clears throat> like tape and glue and a phone so watch this pause pause this video so you can go and watch the this video you'll be able to see some different techniques if you want to learn more there are a whole bunch of different parts watch the ones before this part and you can actually see some of these people working on their cardboard at home so pause this video go and watch the inventor video and then come back all right uh welcome back i hope you actually did do what i asked you to because it's super cool and it's super important towards this project it gives you some great ideas and lets you sneak peek into how some of these things were made so moving on, let's look at some examples of cardboard replicas. So first off, let's look at some more kind of professional art, professional sculpture type of examples. You've got here on the left, a human heart. On the right, a Heineken beer can. So you'll see some things. So on the, the left, the heart, it's not rounded. It is a whole bunch of flat little planes, and this is known as faceting. This is an option. It does take a little longer for some things. The more organic your form is, the harder it's going to be to use something like cardboard. But the nice thing about doing faceting is, for a lot of the cases, you don't have to... You can work straight with the cardboard as thick as it stands because you're just cutting and gluing you're gluing and folding edges and stuff to put them together and then there are little bits and bobs placed on top on the right the beer can you can see that there are parts of the beer can where you can see the corrugation on the inside which you don't really see on the can but it's giving you a nice difference in texture you can see that the letters are cut out and placed on top. The, the main word that says Heineken is thicker than the letters that kind of arc on the top and the bottom of that central label. Those are really thin, just, just the sheet of paper that's on the outside. Here we've got an R2-D2, we've got a sea turtle. Now, I like both of these because these are using complex curves. They've got that kind of dome shape. 
So the R2-D2 one, it's kind of hard to tell how exactly that was done because we're looking at it from an angle that doesn't really help us with that. Because for all of the curves and angles we have, they're fairly simple curves where you're just bending in one direction. But that dome, you've got to bend in a couple different directions. Now, the sea turtle on the right, you can tell by the shell that they broke that up in to individual pieces for the different sections of shell so that the bending is not as extreme. You can keep it simpler. But let's see if my mouse will show up. If you look at this kind of front left panel, this big panel, there's a little spot right here where they tried to curve it in two directions. They tried to curve it from top to bottom and from left to right, and it's got a little bit of a crimp right there. And that can happen when you're trying to do complex curves with something like cardboard. Now, one thing that they did to be able to get this is they peeled the paper off of the cardboard. And you can actually do this a super easy way. Cut the cardboard to the basic shape you need. You can go a little big, you can always trim it down run it under some warm water and you can peel that paper right off you can peel the cor corrugation part you could use all three you know it'll come apart really easily now i don't know if they had some sort of form underneath this to get a real good shape but there's a lot of really small pieces that are glued down around the neck area they've cut really thin strips of just the paper part and they've kind of interwoven those to give some structure but can't really tell if there's something underneath this head to kind of give it that mass but that's a possibility all right you've got this vespa scooter and this old-timey camera the old-timey camera is actually fairly simple. It looks complicated because it's got things like a hit, working hinge and a bellows for the camera. But you've got a lot of flat pieces that are just kind of glued together into boxes. Flat piece for the top. This rounded body, it's just rounded in one direction. It's just curved in this one direction. So that's not a hard thing to do. You can do, you can do something called kerfing where on the back side of it you cut a bunch of little slits really close together and it'll help you bend it a lot easier. You can also wet the whole thing down and bend it and kind of clamp it into that position. You can clamp it with rubber bands or uh, paper clips or something heavier to keep that shape and let it dry that way. The bellows are basically just a bunch of flat sheets that are then kind of connected together with some straps. Now, the scooter, on the other hand, that's super complex. This is a lot of compound curves just all over the place. Um, I don't even know where to start with this sort sort of thing. I just think this is a beautiful piece, and this is all just made out of sculpture, out of cardboard. Now, one thing to keep in mind, you look at a lot of these, and you look at this scooter and there's blue pieces there's red bits there's writing they're just using cardboard boxes they find and you know whatever printing is on there they're making use of that and they're using it in very specific places though so like the shock they use one with red printing bits and bobs of the the motor and whatnot and things like that that's using some of the blue got maybe bits and bobs in the wheel well with some blue. Um, now we're using white cardboard so it should pretty much all just be straight up white in the end. All right. Some fairly simpler ones. These are probably actually student projects. Uh, pair of headphones, chocolate bar, kind of like a uh, similar to a Hershey bar. This absurd one, I think this is by the same guy who did the scooter. It is a dentist chair with dental implements and lamp. You can see there's some Home Depot boxes being used in here. Some, 
I don't know what the red the ones with red are. Those could be just from shipping. Um, but it's super, super clean. And that's one of the things you want to make sure that your cuts and your gluing and your taping or however you're going to be putting this in together is clean. All right. So as this slide says, cardboard is a versatile material that can be used in more ways than simply creating a box construction. You can bend cardboard, tear it, roll it, cut it, layer it up on top of each other, facet it, wet shape it, curl it. Um, so th using these methods, this can, this can and often should be combined to create a realistic recreation. So bending it, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're just creating small bends in it. Tearing it, that'll give you a rougher edge, but if you've got something with some texture, you want a rougher sort of outline to it, that might be good. Rolling it, this happens mostly with just the paper part where you're, you're rolling it up tight. Um, you might use this in case you need something small like a button or something like that where you need it. Just this tight little bit of cardboard and you want it to have that kind of a look to it. Cutting it, that's fairly obvious. Layering this is where you're going to take sheets of cardboard and you're going to stack them on one on top of each other, glue them, and it's going to give you a much more solid construction. Oftentimes, this is a very misused um, application, and I'll show you some examples where this was misused, where doing a couple different things like faceting would have served a much better and easier and faster way of doing this. Faceting, this is where you're taking flat pieces and you are connecting them together at the edge and you want to have these things kind of be small and they should be just in kind of, you know, take take a rounded object and break it down into individual flat planes similar to what that heart looked like. Now wet shaping is interesting because you can take super hot or even boiling water and you can pour it on specifically like the paper outside piece of a piece of cardboard and if you put it between two things that can that are butted up against each other you can create a mold so you can swish the paper between there you know tighten that thing shut put some weight on it or rubber bands or clamps or whatever you need and you let that dry and because that paper was so hot and so wet, it's going to shrink up real tight and keep that shape. So you can get, that's one way of getting some complex curves on a smaller scale probably. And then there's curling. This is like making curly cues out of like the paper portion. It might have some uses like if you're doing something with ribbon or something like that but it's kind of the least useful of all these methods. All right, so now for some student examples. First, some generic ones that I pulled off the web and then ones that I was personally in charge of teaching about. So you've got this kind of Casio keyboard thing. It's big, it's a little clunky. You can see the keys aren't lined up. Um, there's a lot of just layering, like one flat shape on top of another on top of another. Um, it's completely open on the bottom and in the front, so that's why you're getting this sag. If there was just like a piece in the front to prop underneath these keys, you could keep them all even. You've got these two cameras, a 35 millimeter camera and a Polaroid. You've got this, uh, this boombox cassette player. And again, the boom box, you've just got a lot of flat pieces, really bad corners, um, and then just layering pieces. And I mean, you look at the speaker here on the right side, the edge is bent up. The craftsmanship is really bad on this piece. I don't know what any of these things are supposed to really be doing. I, I mean, I know what they are because I owned something like this, but it's not a good replica. Now these ones are better replicas, but they're not perfect. Like there are some major flaws in the construction 
and craftsmanship of this Polaroid camera, but it's got it's giving you the same silhouette. So if like you just saw a silhouette of this thing, it would look like a Polaroid camera. The 35 millimeter, there's some wonky things like this lens is not right at all. It's way too big, but it's also just doesn't look. It looks like a coffee. A, paper coffee cup they put on top of a camera body everything else is fairly simple they've kept things pretty clean on it though oops ah all right you got this fan which i think is really cool this is really well done so instead of having curves to the the guard around the fan blade they've basically kind of faceted that um the Stop it. This part here, the, the, the drum of the fan, that is, uh, that is a facet where it is cut along this seam on the inside, and then it's just folded. So they did it instead of having individual pieces. It's one continuous piece that's kind of, kind of rolled, but with a bunch of straight edges. The crab, I just thought the crab was cool looking. Um, we're not doing living objects, but the crab was fun. All right, we got a super janky looking typewriter that I, I've never seen a typewriter that looks like this or is it that flat. That's an example of bad. And an example of one that's pretty darn stinking cool and good is this this grand piano. Now, there are some little problems with it, like the front of these keys on the on the left side, I don't know what's going on with the faces of those. Um, I wish the, the ones that are supposed to be the black keys would be a little more even. But look at the size of these keys compared to like the piano bench or the the song book. Their li the proportions are massively out of whack. But it's still a, a fun looking piece. Alright, now on to some projects of students of mine. So these are examples of projects for this that were done by my Huntington University students this semester. So we did this as our second project of the semester. And this is a giant rubber ducky. It is as specific to exact measurements as she could possibly get. Now she did an interesting thing where she created a skeletal structure out of cardboard where think of it like the the balsa wood dinosaur skeletons like I've got the one sitting on my shelf and she did that for you know the whole thing except for the mouth and the tail and kind of these wing protrusions to get the body and the head and she hot glued all those skeletal pieces together and then she took the paper from the cardboard and basically paper mache this whole thing over top so she dipped it in watered down glue and layered that up small real small pieces and then when she had the basic body then she went into folding some cardboard cutting and folding some cardboard for the mouth for both sides you know having flatter pieces like along the to be like the the inner part of the mouth um, did some newspaper that was taped down pretty good and more paper mache than over top for the tail and then she actually used hot glue, and she basically used hot glue to sculpt the wings. And then she paper mache over top of that. I will say this sucker is probably a good seven pounds. Uh, it is a hefty be little beast. And there are some problems, like you can look in this lower right-hand picture. The head's not completely even. But you know, look at the you look at the profile of the one here on the left, and it's just beautiful looking. The tongue inside of it is hot glue that is paper mache over. The eyes are hot glue that are paper mache over. 
So some real cool problem solving. You've got this longboard skateboard. You look at it from the top, you know, if you look at the, especially this middle picture, it doesn't look like that much. He did something interesting where he took full sheets of cardboard and he glued them all together, put glue on the whole surface, clamped them all down, put weights on top of that, let that dry, and he used like Elmer's glue for that. And then he cut the whole thing out, and he used a bandsaw to cut that out. Now he was originally going to he he was originally going to glue just individual sheets of the cardboard paper down, which would have made it super strong. It'd been like wood, pretty much. Um, but then one of the cool things is there are so many little tiny detailed parts. I don't even have a great picture of it of the mechanism for like the wheel assemblies there are straight sheets that are glued together there are rounded bits there are parts where he's layering up uh like almost paper mache over little bits he's got you know some wet bending in here for curved parts of the wheels very very kind of cool and you've got this coffee pot. Now, I allow for things like if you've got a cord or something, he ended up using, it's basically a, like a shoelace, and the plug itself isn't a plug. It is just layered, card. it's just layered up cardboard. Now, one of the things that I'm not a fan of with this one is that this entire thing is just layered cardboard. It's super solid. It's way too much material. And he did not get the shape he wanted. This does not have, it's not supposed to have a straight uh, vertical back. It's supposed to have curves to it. And he wasn't able to get that. He didn't bother doing things like making the lid for the back part or the front part where you can actually move it. So if you've got like moving parts, you want to try to make it replicate that. Now the overall look of this, it's still really nice. You immediately know what this is. Um, and then you've got this Sony PlayStation controller. She did an awesome job with this. She did the same basic techniques as with that duck. She created a tiny little skeletal structure, which the the engineering behind that just kind of blows my mind because people have tried to do video game controllers and it's way harder than they think. She kind of regretted this, but she stuck to it. She did a lot in the last like two or three days of this project. Um, but then it's basically it's paper mache over top of that. And I mean, you've got, you're not just looking at the top, you're looking at the back side, you're looking at the sides. You know, she went through and made the connector pieces. And then the last one I want to show you is this iron. Now, she had a lot of troubles just figuring out what she wanted to do. She ended up finding an iron in the painting studio at Huntington. Um, and she worked really slowly. She worked it on different parts. Of there, there. This is not finished, really. There are parts like all these rough, raw pieces of cardboard aren't finished but the complex parts where, where it looks super layered up it's ridiculously accurate um, so this is so, not something you can just wait to the last minute to do you have to be consistent with this you want to constantly be taking measurements you want to have the object that you're replicating right there so you can measure what you're doing compared to that because you want it as exact as possible because when we're done with this we want to have both projects side by side so the assignment of this um, so you need to choose a common everyday object this is bring it into school but since you're on quarantine this is going to be with you at home for right now 
Um, you may not use your smartphone or any other super simple like rectangular device. There needs to be some complexity to this. We have had in the past, let's see, Jonah Bricker did a kind of old school alarm clock. Uh, Eli Masters did a claw hammer, but he didn't do a great job on it. Um, we had someone try to do a vase. But it was a lot of complex curves, and it was clear and glass. Um, and there were actually other examples I could have shown, but they're con currently on display at Huntington, so I don't have pictures of those. So look for it. Look for an interesting uh, object that you can use. So this says you'll be given a single piece of cardboard. I gave you two. Um, you can use some of it as scrap, or if you've got scrap cardboard lying around at house the house do some practice first to kind of figure out how it can work together uh, your replica should be as close in size and look to the real object as you can get now the other thing about this is here's here's the kind of materials you've got your cardboard you can use glue like Elmer's glue wood glue super glue you can use masking tape. I would not use any other type of tape besides masking tape, though. Maybe if you can get the paper packing tape, but not the nasty plastic packing tape. That stuff's just gross. Uh, it also does not take a finish very well. Um, X-Acto knives are going to be necessary for this. Um, scissors might be good if you've got a good pair of scissors. You can use some extraneous things like string or yarn for certain parts that call for it. Um, but if you can get away with using just the cardboard and adhesion materials, that's what you want to do. If you've got questions about any of this, how you would do certain parts, let me know. Shoot me an email. While you're on quarantine, I will probably period. I'll, I'll I'll let you know about this, but we'll do periodic Zoom check-ins so I can see what you're doing. Um, who knows? We might be going all on virtual soon enough. So that is the assignment. I'm going obviously you're going to have this video. I'm going to share the Google slide presentation itself, and I'm going to share the inventor one. I have a. A second video, or well, I guess in this case a third video, to show you uh, from a channel that does nothing but makes cardboard prop replicas. So I'll put a link to one of his videos in the assignment as well. So remember, if you've got questions, ask. Don't put this off though. Start with this because what you're going to be doing with this is you're doing this now. And you're going to do this to completion, which should be before the end of the semester. And then when that's done, then you'll go into your big clay project. Since you're going to be out for a while, can't do the clay project, this is something you can do. And then anyone who is not in quarantine, they're just going to flip-flop. They'll do the clay project, and then they'll come and do this. So you guys should finish up all at about the same time with both of those projects. So let me know if you have any questions enjoy this it can be a super fun project it is not a simple project though so with that good luck have fun